we talking about? Once again, we're talking about a knife that really surprised me. This is that Kubi Raven that Jared sent me from over at Neve's Knives. So, pleasantly surprised. Before we get too further into it, guys, you know what time it is. If you're watching on headphones, turn down the volume because here comes a little bit of music. playing in the background is Minty's comedic arts. Uh, he does a lot of movie trivia things where he talks, he does videos where it's like 10 things you didn't know about this movie. And he gets into production stuff and, and little known facts and things about the actors and all those things that you might not know that go in behind the scenes. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, go give him a view. Like I said, I can't afford to send him any money, but I can send you guys his direction and try and give him some extra views. He already has a robust channel, but still, Support the channels you love, and I, I really like this channel. So, anyway, this is the Kubi Raven. This came in from Jared over at Neve's Knives, and I was kind of surprised uh, by the quality of this knife. Nothing against Kubi Knives, but I've seen several of them in the past, and they really were kind of the atypical cheap Chinese knives. I have one, and the only thing I ever really used it for was to scrape the stropping compound off of my leather strop. So, you know, I really didn't, I didn't have a lot of... Uh, I didn't have a lot of big hopes going into this one, so. Uh, but I kind of, I kind of just put my my preconceptions at the door and just walked into this one kind of blind, and I'm glad I did because I really like this knife. So, without any further ado, let's hit the table and take a good look at this from above. So, what are we looking at, guys? Well, this is the Kubi Raven, like I said. Now, this is a Jelly Jerry design. And when it first came in, I did not know it was a Kubi. I saw it and I was like, well, that's kind of neat, unique looking. And I popped it open and I held it in hand. And I was like, wow, what's the, what's that pivot say, KB? And then I saw a Kubi. And so I was able to, you know, by that first impression, I had completely checked my preconceptions as a door. So uh, just to get that out of the way, like I had said in the thing, this wound up being a knife that I really, really like. So let's get some specs out of the way. What we're looking at is a... 3.94 inch Aus 10 blade that's done in a drop point fashion uh, with a black oxide coating. Now that's what they have listed. Uh, steel is said to be done at 61 to 63 HRC, which I can believe because this took a really good edge and it has held it. Um, I don't know how well you're going to see it, but I have done some cutting. That oxide coating has got some scratches. I have been doing a good bit of cutting with this one. Uh, because I was curious about it. So I didn't see anything listed about blade stock thickness. So we're going to go ahead and get that right now. As you can see, I had it zeroed. So you're looking about uh, 0.118-ish, 0.185. I would, 0.1195. I would say that original blade stock, blade stock thickness was probably listed as 0 0.12, which that would come in right about. Let's check behind the edge thickness on this. Um, right behind the edge, you're looking at, there we go, right behind the edge, 0.24-ish, so not super thin, but also not horrible. Uh, handles on this are 4.98 inches. That gives you an overall length of 8.66 inches, for those of you guys who are keeping track. Uh, so overall length. They're done in black G10 with a AL4V titanium pocket clip, which on this one is black. So, you, you know, you, it's all blacked out. All the hardware is black. It gives it a good, nice look. Um, this does run on ceramic bearings, and it's a steel liner lock. So this thing is an attractive package. It gets some interesting lines. I had said this kind of looks like Groot, or maybe a piece of Groot's anatomy. Who knows? Uh, and it's not super heavy, so they have it listed as 125 grams, but I do have batteries in my scale now, so we can go ahead and pull that up, and we'll look at it. We'll do it in grams first, since they didn't do it in freedom units, we will. Um, 123 on my scale, they said 125, let's go ahead and make sure that's zeroed out. Uh, 123, 4 in the middle somewhere in there, you know, that's an approximate weight. So in ounces, for those of you that are like me that use freedom units, 
that's four and four and a quarter ounces not horrible it's not super light but it's also not heavy now let's talk about this overall this knife gives you some really interesting lines this is an attractive nice not attractive knife um i do like this backspacer this is another knife that has that backspacer that if you want a lanyard you can put it in but you don't have a big ugly lanyard hole that detracts from the look of the knife that is one of the reasons i'm not a fan of lanyard holes it's not that i care so much about people putting lanyards or you know i'm not big on lanyards but a lanyard hole can detract from the look of the knife and this doesn't because it's in the backspacer i'd like to see more companies doing this um having all that hardware blacked out really gives it an interesting look. Now I got something on this. I'm going to have to clean this up before I send it back to Jared. I got something on it and I have it cleaned up under the pocket clip. It's probably donut icing to tell you the truth. I'm old and I like donuts. Um, the pivot on this really attracted action. The action on this is really smooth and good. And I was like, okay, well, the action's good. How much blade play? Rock solid. None. There is no blade play. I didn't do a lot of heavy, heavy use with this, but I will say I did get a piece of wood and I've done this before and I never really mentioned it uh, until Nick from Stasa said something about it in the podcast. I do take a piece of wood and I cut because when you're bearing down on a knife to cut into something hard like wood or really super thick cardboard or something like that, that's when you're going to find hot spots on a knife and I really didn't find one on this. Um, the pocket clip is just about perfect here. I'll let you listen in and out of pocket. So I'm wearing a pair of jeans, not too bad. It doesn't click too bad. It's not too tight. Um, if you're wearing thicker pants though, I did have a pair of jeans on where they were a good bit thicker, uh, different brand of pants. And I did have a little bit of a problem with that being a little too vertical for my taste. I'd like to see him take that and change that angle down a little bit more so like what you see on a Grimsmo Norseman pocket clip where it's a little smoother on both sides where you kind of follow that, just basically radius that all the way through uh, because it does have a tendency to catch on the seam of some pants, but not horribly. The blade is nice and thin and gives it a, a good look. And then those lines on it give it a really aggressive look. I like this milling that people have started doing down into those openings. It just gives it, I don't know, it's just something about it. It makes it look more attractive and the flipper on this just perfect for either push button or light switch um yeah i really was surprised by this i was surprised how much i like this and the big thing that surprised me i was like okay that's that's a cool looking knife but i wonder how uncomfortable having it dip down there is when you hold it in hand the first couple times you carry it you're like wow that feels kind of strange because my fingers you know i'm not feeling that right there like that's there and it's kind of open there but after you carry it after you carry it for a couple days you really don't notice that anymore and like i said it doesn't feel like i'm being shoved up in even though there's a good bit of jimping on that flipper tab i didn't ever once when i was carrying this feel like i was being pushed up in it felt that uncomfortable there are some knives that a lot of times you get up into that flipper tab and then it's uncomfortable uh the jimping on the flipper tab itself not too much, just enough that you could get, I bet it'd be perfect in gloves. If you were trying to disengage that lock in gloves, it'd be perfect. And the lockup on this was really good. I didn't feel any flex or play in that, which for a long time, that's why I kind of shied away from liner locks. Um, you can see that it's nice and open down in here. So it's going to be easy to clean. You don't have to worry about cleaning out the, the track for the stop pin nice and easy to clean. And if you don't want to have to take it apart, easy access to those bearings down there. You can just drop some lubricant from the top and not have to take it apart. I did not take this knife apart. Um, I carried it a good bit. It got a lot of pocket leak in it. I rinsed it under the sink and then just put a drop or two of KPL from the top because there is a, a wide enough gap in there. As you can see, let me zoom in on it a little bit so you can see. You can see there's a wide enough gap in there that you can get into and get the lubricant down in there without having to take the knife apart to do it. So all in all, really, really happy. Thanks again, Jared, for sending me this completely, like completely changed my thought process on a company that previously was, uh, I had one that it's been in a drawer somewhere and I use it to scrape the, 
the stropping compound off of my strop because I just didn't think it was a very good knife. But this one is a really, really good showing from Kubi. So that's about all I got on it, guys. Let's go ahead and turn this around and do some final thoughts. Yeah, Kubi, I'm glad that, that you have stepped up your game. This just designed by Jelly Jerry was executed very well. And at the price point, which I'm about to throw at you, $50 on Amazon. So that's not bad at all. And it's Austin, the action on it's really good. It's well done, there was no blade play. It took a good edge and it held it really well. And the coating held up. So, you know, all those things I talk about down there. And speaking of Amazon, just segue into that. I have affiliate links down below for Amazon. I will find an affiliate link for this and put it on Amazon so that you guys have it. So you can go down and you can look it up and I get credit for anything you purchase through the affiliate links. It helps support the channel. Speaking of supporting the channel, like I say, when I put these up, I'm offering this guy to you so that you can enjoy his content. If you enjoy my content, please try to support the channel. It's as simple as sharing the videos with people you think would like them. But if you do want to support the channel financially, I have a membership tab down below that gets you in on exclusive content, exclusive giveaways. You get early access to videos. It's a lot of fun. I am going to start doing some members only live feeds uh, because I definitely can't do a three day a week podcast. That was just to pre-fill a bunch of content that Apple required that I had to start putting up so that I had a bunch of ready podcasts. So, you know, membership tab down below, but if you want to just support a specific video, if you like a specific video, there's something they call super thanks, which is you basically you drop it in. I see it. Um, it's like, it's like a super chat for a pre-recorded video. Uh, other ways you can support the channel. I do have Besides the affiliate links, I have an Ember Shirt Co. store link where you can go in and anything you purchase through that link, I get credit for. And you also have my actual merch store where it's just my merch, where you can purchase those. But for anything you purchase through Ember Shirt Co., please don't forget, use my coupon code, Crazy Sharp, capital C, capital S, all one word, Crazy Sharp. I set that up for you guys. Um, other than that, guys, like the videos. If you like them, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down. But please try to tell me why, because I can't change content if you don't tell me. That being that, guys, I love you all. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. Take care of yourselves. Be kind to each other. Keep it clean in the comment section, and I will see you in the next video.